Beetle. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the friend of the unfortunate, enemy of criminals. A mysterious, all-powerful character, a problem to the police. But a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask in a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk but stronger than steel. Today's Blue Beetle episode is entitled, Murder for Profit. James A. Ridley of Ridley and Cochran, wealthy investment brokers, died in city hospital under peculiar circumstances. Was his death on the operating table murder? Will his death affect the stock market? Can Dan Garrett, rookie patrolman, who is also the Blue Beetle, solve this case and run the murderers to earth? As our story opens, Dan Garrett is visiting his friend and advisor, Dr. Franz, in his little apothecary shop. But, Danny, you say the authorities suspected an attempt would be made on Ridley's life? Apparently. They sent Manigan and me rushing over to City Hospital to guard Ridley as soon as they heard he was to be operated on. But what made them suspicious? I don't know. Unless it was because they knew his death would affect the stock market, give groups in the know a chance to clean up and make a lot of money. Uh How? Well, Ridley was an international figure in investment circles. He controlled several large corporations. Uh, Yes, yes, I I know that. His death will undoubtedly cause the stocks of those corporations and possibly others to drop temporarily. Yes, but... uh... Doc, if some crooked professional speculators were sure Ridley would not come off that operating table alive, they could play the stock market and clean up a fortune. But what about the other investors in the market? Wouldn't they stand to lose all they had? Precisely. But the murderers of Ridley wouldn't care about that. And why are you so certain it was murder? Look, Doc, here's what happened. When Manigan and I arrived at the hospital this morning... Hey, Danny, it looks like something's up. Yeah. Wait, I'll ask this guy come along the hallway and find Dr. Bartlett. Say, you wait till we find Dr. Bartlett. Dr. Bartlett can see no one. We're from police headquarters. We've been sent to guard Banker Ridley. You're too late. Mr. Ridley's dead. Dead? Yes, he died on the operating table just a minute ago. Manigan, you phone headquarters while I take a look around. Okay, Dan, I'll do that. I'll be in or somewhere near the operating room. I've got to find Dr. Bartlett. Oh, just a moment. Are you Dr. Bartlett? Uh, No, I'm just an intern. Uh, Dr. Bartlett's office is two doors down on the right. Uh, What's that you've got in your hand? It's a scalpel. A scalpel? Yes, a very sharp knife for making incisions. What are you doing with it? Well, I, uh, I'm not permitted to speak. Come on, come on, open up. I'm the law. Well, you'll have to see Dr. Bartlett. I'm seeing you right now with a bloody scalpel in your hand. Here in this room here, I want to talk to you. But you... In you go. Now, tell me what happened in the operating room. I assure you, it's against the ethics of... Ethics be hanged. Talk. Did you kill Banker Ridley? No, I, I tell you, I had nothing to do with it. Then what are you doing with that scalpel? I picked it up after the lights went on. The lights went on? Were they off? Yes. Just after Dr. Bartlett made the incision in Mr. Ridley's throat and was about to operate on the diseased gland, the lights went out suddenly and a stench bomb exploded just inside the door. It blinded everybody and everything was confusion. When the lights finally went on, Mr. Ridley was breathing his last. An artery in his throat had been severed. Where were you standing? Across the table from Dr. Bartlett. Then you could... Yes, but I didn't. And what are you doing with that scalpel? I told you, I picked it up when the lights went off. Why? I noticed it was bloody. But wouldn't it naturally be, hadn't it just been used to make an incision? Not this scalpel. The one Dr. Bartlett used to make the incision had already been put back into the sterilizer. But why should you pick up this scalpel? I thought there might be fingerprints on it. Fingerprints? When everybody would be wearing sterile rubber gloves? Well, I... I I didn't stop to realize that. Your story is pretty thin. I'm going to take you down to headquarters and let some of our... From your story, I take it you suspect the intern of having killed Ridley during the confusion caused by the unexpected development. No, I don't really. I think someone higher up is the guilty person. Oh, surely not Dr. Bartlett. 
He's one of the most famous and respected surgeons in the country. Ridley's death meant profit in millions to someone or to some group. You know the lengths to which some of our most respected citizens will sometimes go to acquire quick riches. Yeah, that's true. You know, money is all right when it does good. But money is evil when it causes evil. Well, there's the first edition of the evening papers. Let's... Yes. Well, it started just as we suspected. Listen to that. Yes. Well, Danny, what are you going to do? Patrolman Dan Garrett is off duty, but the Blue Beetle never is. I'm going into action. Can I help you? Yes, Doc, you can. What about that secret solution you made that dissolves steel? You mean my formula X4? Yes, that's it. I, uh, I have some over here in this cabinet. Ah, here you are. Now, here. Here's a little file of it. But be very careful. It's powerful stuff. Thanks, Doc. Uh, what about your portable wireless telephone? I've got that in my magic ray and my flashlight. Good, good. You know, Doc, if I can solve this case quickly, maybe I can save a lot of little investors from losing their life savings. Ah, that's true, Danny, that's true. Well, Doc, the Blue Beetle has some nipping to do tonight. So long, Doc. I'll see you when I've cleaned up this stock market racket. Again, the Blue Beetle rides the night wind. In his speedy motor car, he sets out in search of the murderers of Banker Ridley. Will he unmask them? Can he uncover their plot to make millions by murder? Where will the Blue Beetle strike first? In a dark street at the rear of the Ridley home, a long blue motor car comes to a stop. A figure silently steps forth and approaches the high wall around Ridley's city home. Now, here's the rear of Ridley's house. I'll have to watch my step. Wealthy neighborhoods, well guarded. Ah, here's a door in this wall. Locked, I'll bet. Just as I thought. Let me see now. Try one of these master keys. No, that one won't do. I'll try this one. Ah, that's the one. Better go easy. The hinges on this door will probably squeak. So far, so good. Better close this after me. Watchman finds this open, he'll be suspicious. Now to gain entrance to the house without arousing anyone. Hang that... What's going on here? Here's a window. Probably wired down with a burglar alarm. Just attach these suction cups to it. And I'll cut out the glass. Remove it without disturbing the frame. Uh, that's got it. I'll just remove the whole pane of glass and climb through. There. Now. I'll look around with my flash. That's the kitchen. All clear here. This door must lead into the dining room. No, no, that's the pantry. The dining room is beyond. What does this other door lead to? It's the hallway. The library should be up there on the right. Everything is dark. Well, this is my chance to search the place. I'll take the library first. The wall is hollow. Just the place for a wall safe. Back of the picture. See if I can move this panel. And I may be a button. Someone's coming. I'll hide behind these curtains until they go. Who's in there? Come on, Roll, shoot! have a little light on the subject. Huh? Yeah. I just want I heard someone come in there. I was right. The picture over Father's wall safe. It's bad. It's a blue speech. Drop that gun, Ridley. Not me, Al. 
sorry, Ridley, but I want to examine some of your father's private papers for a possible clue to his murder. Mm, he's out like a light. Well, I'll just tie you up, <clears throat> gag you, and then put you... Let me see. It's over there, back of that couch. There. Now to open the panel. Just as I thought. A large wall safe hidden behind that panel. Now for a little Formula X4 port on the lock. working, all right. Eating right through that steel. There, that does it. Jewels, stocks, and bonds. What's this? A letter. To whom it may concern. This is to inform the authorities that should my death occur due to other than natural causes, would be advisable to investigate the affairs of my partner, Charles Cochran, and my adopted son, Samuel. Well, Mr. Ridley, the Blue Beetle will certainly investigate. I'd better take these papers and jewels along with me. They'll be safer with me than here with your adopted son, Samuel. Off into the night sped the Blue Beetle on the trail of those responsible for the death of Banker Ridley. Meanwhile, at police headquarters, Officer Manigan, playing a hunch, he has also decided to go to Cochran's office. In the still of the night, two cars are speeding toward the same destination. Each has a single occupant. One of the cars reaches its destination ahead of the other. A mysterious figure alights and disappears behind the building on the corner. Quickly, he mounts the fire escape. A minute later, a circle of light is playing on the door of a safe. In the middle of that circle of light is a large blue beetle. The doctor's Formula X-4 worked once before tonight. It ought to work here. It sure is powerful stuff. Now let's see what this safe contains. Ah. Stocks, bonds, and certificates. Here's a list of something. To be sold short for Samuel Ridley, Charles Cochran, and Mr. John Smythe. If and when. I wonder who this Mr. Smythe is. You'll never know, Mr. Blue Beetle. Officer Manigan. Isn't it late for you to be out alone? No, 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 that. They've got you covered and I'll shoot you if you make a move. You're going to the station house with me. Maybe you can explain to the DA what you're doing in this office at that safe there. I was looking for the lost cord. Cut out the wise cracks and slip these bracelets on. I'm sorry, Manigan. We both seem to be cornered. That door in back of you is blocked. What? You. What? You. <laughs> Never take your eyes off your man until you've got him securely handcuffed, Manigan. 